So we'll talk about horizontal asymptotes first. Okay, I'll reopen that that up because you're gonna have some infinite limits in there that you need some of this to answer them. So we'll go with horizontal asymptotes first. So function has a horizontal asymptote, y equals b. So that's a horizontal line with y coordinate b. If either of the following are true. So if either you go towards negative infinity and your limit is b, or you go towards positive infinity and your limit is b. If either of those are happening, or if both are happening, you can say that your, your horizontal asymptote is b. And we saw that happen on the example we looked at. The 1 over x function had y equals 0. And we saw that no matter which way you went, you would approach 0 on both sides. So the further out you go to the right, Closer you get to zero, further you go to left, closer you get to zero. So how do we find horizontal asymptotes if I give you a function? That would be vertical asymptotes. So we just, now I've given you more than two definitions. I said I only gave you two definitions. This is, I gave you a definition right here of horizontal asymptote. I will ask you to find horizontal asymptotes, but I won't ask you to write out the definition of a horizontal asymptote. So I've given you a lot more than just two definitions, but there's two that I'll actually explicitly ask you about because they're really important to calculus. All right, so how do I find horizontal asymptotes? It's right here on the board, right in the middle. Take the limit. Plug in B. So the equation. Take the limit. So we don't know what B is yet. We're going to see if we take a limit, will we get a number B or won't we? And we're going to take two limits, one going to infinity, one to negative infinity. So we're going to take two limits. So we'll do positive infinity first. Usually positives are a little easier to deal with than negatives. So we'll go positive infinity first. So we're going to check both plus minus infinite limits. I want to change the problem a little bit. Let me write a 3x squared over 2x cubed. It shouldn't require erasing if you space it out enough. So let's go ahead and just plug in infinity wherever you see x right here.
So we're going to use some intuition on infinity. So what do you think infinity is if you take infinity and you square it? So that'll be infinity again. Now it's actually a bigger infinity, but don't worry about that too much right now. It's going to be infinity. What is infinity <coughs> and then one less than that? Still going to be infinity. So I can subtract off infinity. It's not going to change it. I, unless I subtract infinity, that's a way harder question. We'll do in um, calculus two with that. All right, so on the denominator, I got infinity cubed, infinity. Oh man, minus two infinities? Uh oh. Uh, if you just look though, the infinity cube is going to be bigger. So it's basically there's a lot of infinities hanging around. So I can't just say, hey, it's this number automatically. So I'm just going to put a big. I don't know. That's how I grade sometimes if I don't know what's going on. So what I'm going to do instead, what do you do when you take a limit and you get some weird 0 over 0? You got some undefined quantity. Change your factor. So you use algebra. Whether you're factoring, multiplying, conjugate, doing some other stuff, you're going to do algebra. So we're going to do that right here. So I'm going to multiply by something that is not terribly obvious. One or two of you may know what where I'm going to multiply by. Nope. Almost getting warmer. Okay. So I'm going to pick the largest power of x. So I see a cubed right here. So what I'm going to do is multiply the numerator denominator by 1 over x cubed. If I start doing a lot of algebra and I keep writing a lim, lim, lim every single step, that gets annoying. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to do my algebra separate, and then I'm going to bring my simplified algebra, it's actually going to look more complicated, and bring that back in to calculus. So I'm going to do all my algebra on the right, and then bring that back in at the end. So I don't have to keep rewriting lim, lim, lim all over the place. So the left side of the board is going to be calculus, the right side is going to be algebra. So why is this not illegal? Because it's still 1 over 1. It's only, I'm multiplying by 1. There's one x value that I have to watch out for, which would be 0. But even if we were taking a limit, x approaches 0, that wouldn't matter, because x still wouldn't be 0. But how close is x to 0 when we're approaching infinity? That's yeah, really far away. So I'm definitely not worried about dividing by 0 when I'm approaching infinity. So. We need to distribute across like this. So there's two terms on the top and three terms in the bottom. So each one is going to get the 1 over x cubed. So I'm going to reduce. This is 3 over x minus 1 over x cubed <coughs> divided by 2 minus 2 over x squared plus 1 over x cubed. And algebraically, on the right there, I wrote it out with nice capital letters of what's really happening. We just got some f over f, and we're going to multiply it. So it's going to be af times b, uh, af minus bf. And I'm distributing f to the denominator in three places. So remember, this is calculus class, not algebra class. So you're going to have to use algebra, but I can't really give you that many points for using algebra. Uh, unfortunately, I can take points away from using algebra incorrectly. Just like your English class, if you spell things correctly, you don't just get points for that. But usually, you get points for your ideas, and you get taken off points if you're uh, probably not so much for spelling, but maybe your grammar, punctuation, uh, things like that are really bad. You, you get points off for that. But you're not going to get rewarded for spelling things correctly, generally.
Same thing is true. Algebra is a tool we're using. Algebra is not uh, calculus. So it is the language that we manipulate all of our expressions in. All right, so I'm going to rewrite. This looks way uglier. And I've talked about multi-story fractions being dangerous. This is dangerous, but we're keeping it straight as to what's in the numerator, what's in the denominator. So I'm just going to rewrite this over here with our limit now. So this dividing line separates all my algebra from my calculus. So we get lim x approaches infinity, 3 over x, Move that limb down a little bit. So we did this because I said so. What we're about to find out is why I said so. So we're going to take the limit of each of these five terms. And I'll write in blue what they're going to. So let's start with the easy one I could see. 3 over x, that's just like the limit that we took yesterday. So what happens when x gets really big and you got 3 divided by a huge number? It's really small. Really small. And so the limit will go to 0. So it gets really small, smaller, smaller, smaller. So if you go to infinity, which you can't do, but you can think about going there, it's going to go to 0. So what I just circled is going to go to 0, right there. Now, 1 over x cubed. What happens to that term when x is really big? 0. zero. Now, this one actually gets smaller even faster, because that big number is being cubed. But either way, it's still going to get smaller and smaller. So this one's going to 0. And same thing, 1 over x cubed in the denominator is going to go to 0. And what about 2 over x squared? Zero. Zero. Go to 0 also. What about the number 2 as x approaches infinity? It's going to be 2. It's going to be 2. There's no x's in there, so x, 2 doesn't care about x. It's just going to be 2 for all the time. So why did I do this? Because all the lower power terms all are disappearing right now. So our limit is 0 minus 0 divided by 2 minus 0 minus 0, which is 0 over 2. So our limit is 0. So the reason I made that choice is because that will make all of our terms that weren't the highest power disappear. So we'll zoom back out so you can see all the... So I did all my algebra on one side, and it's important what you don't see... <coughs> I took my limit, that you don't see a limit right here. So there is no limb x approaches infinity because I took my limit. So there is no limit here. So I actually applied my limit, and this is the first step after I applied my limit. So that's I don't keep writing lim, lim, lim forever. I apply limit until I've taken it. And then I stop writing limit down there. So that little squiggle line is where I went from having you know, lim to applying the limit. So above it is where I had the limit. Below it is after I applied it. So the squiggle line is where I applied the limit there. You don't have to go in with the blue pen and write all these comments all over your notes. But I'm just writing the blue uh, of what's happening sort of behind the scenes right here. So what I'm writing in blue, you don't have to write. You may want to write it a couple times when you start some problems, but you don't need to write this on your quiz to get full points. 
So this is just the explanation of why all this is happening. So there could be another horizontal asymptote. And we'll find it when we approach uh, negative infinity this time. So we just went positive infinity, now we're going to go to negative infinity. So we're going to try x approaching negative infinity. So we did all of our algebra already. We don't need to redo algebra. So I'm just going to write that version down there again. 3 over x minus 1 over x cubed, 2 minus 2 over x squared, plus 1 over x cubed. Now we know, oh, looks like I lost negative on my infinity. That's not good. That should be negative infinity, not regular infinity. All right, what is 3 over a huge negative number? What is that going to approach? What's 3 over negative 1 trillion? It's a negative number, but it's super tiny, right? So it's negative a super tiny number. So it's going to approach 0. It's approaching from the negative side, but it's still going to approach 0. So we're going to have 0 minus, same thing happens here, 0, divided by 2 minus 0 plus 0, which is going to be 0. So either side, our limit is 0. So I got both of my limits are 0. Uh, so my only horizontal asymptote is 0 on both sides. If I graph this out, I'd be approaching zero. So there's my only horizontal asymptote. If I got something different, if I got negative one, I would have said a one horizontal asymptote approaching on the right is zero, and on the left is this other number. So in this case, same on both sides. Some functions might approach one thing on one side, different thing on the other side. So you want to test both sides. So this trick that we did right here, so our new algebra trick we just learned, So you multiply by 1 over x to the n divided by 1 over x to the n, where n is the highest degree in both the numerator and denominator. So you look for the biggest power, doesn't matter if it's numerator or denominator. You just say, we're going to use that power. So in the numerator and denominator. Yes, so we'll have to think a little harder. So that'll be either positive or negative infinity, depending on which type of zero we have. So the asymptote would be negative or positive infinity? Infinity. Okay. And then it wouldn't be an asymptote because it's not a number. Right. Okay. So if it's a number, it's an asymptote. So it was, then the answer would be no. There is no asymptote. You could tell me about end behavior. Oh, it's going up on the, you know, as I go to the right, it's going up. Uh, so this is called, so those are horizontal asymptotes. So this is end behavior.
So obviously, if x approaches infinity and f of x approaches either infinity or negative infinity, that's not an asymptote. It's not a horizontal asymptote. It's not a number. So if you're going to graph it, what this means is going to go up on the right side, and the second one means down on the right side, as opposed to flat or a horizontal asymptote. So I just draw the cloud. It's like a Mario cloud where you don't know what's happening on the inside unless you took pre-calculus one class. And then you'll know about vertical asymptotes, which we'll go through. And we're going to go through a lot more carefully uh, than we did in pre-calculus one. And you will discover what's inside the cloud with vertical asymptotes. And we're going to look at slopes and minimums and maximums and all that good stuff we couldn't really figure out in pre-calculus class. So this is what end behavior looks like if it's positive infinity and negative infinity. I should point this way. I'm always going to point the wrong way, but down to the right or up to the right. And that's positive infinity, negative infinity. So what's a really easy example? Uh, up to the right, how about uh, y equals x squared? That goes up. I mean, it looks like this, but on the right goes up. Uh, what's an easy example of this? I could just be really cheap and go negative x squared and flip it over. Hey, look. And down to the right. <laughs> so there's an example of down to the right. There's infinite examples. I'm just picking the easiest ones that are coming to my, uh, my mind. So, oh, so there's one choice or another choice or horizontal asymptote. There is skew asymptote, but I'm not going to ask for that. Your web works might ask for that. I don't really want to go over it. So I'm just going to put a little asterisk and write skew asymptote. And I'm going to write not on um, exam. So when you get that web work question, if it's a skew asymptote, you can look it up. It's not that hard. It means your numerator was one higher than your denominator. So a skew asymptote is really approaching infinity or negative infinity. It's just going in a nice line as opposed to a curve. So we want to find end behavior. So to find end behavior, no matter what, you're going to take limit as x approaches infinity. Uh, and actually, that will be plus or minus, depending on wh what end you want, right or left. So if we just plug in infinity, we'll basically get infinity squared over infinity. So that's not good. So we're going to do that trick, pick the highest power of uh, the highest exponential power, which is 2. We're going to multiply by 1 over x squared, 1 over x squared. So that algebraic trick I just taught you, new algebra trick, we're just going to do that where our highest power is 2. I'm do you want us to show the trick on an exam, or do you want to like this? So if you don't show the trick, uh, I'll show you a, a shortcut around it. All right, so go ahead and multiply this out and figure out which terms go to 0, which ones don't go to 0. Now, this algebra is a little easier, so I'm going to keep writing lim each time. I'm not going to do my algebra separate. Oblique asymptotes are also called, or skew asymptotes are also called oblique. But I think you have enough vocabulary to worry about. I'm not going to make you remember more.
So we get down to 1 over 0. Now we got this before, it was either plus or minus infinity. It's a little tricky to tell if it should be positive or negative infinity right now. What you have to do is compare these two zeros and see which one was bigger and smaller because you're going to be subtracting them. And then if the first one's bigger, uh, it'll be positive. If the second one's bigger, it'll be negative. And that's kind of hard to do. So what I'm going to do right now is show you the physicist method. And that is a way faster way to find these. So this is the full correct way to do it. Uh, what we're going to do instead is a physicist method. It's a shortcut. Physicist method. It's a shortcut. So what's important is the highest powers. So you're going to look at only the high power term in the numerator, the high power term in the denominator, and you're going to throw away everything else. This only works if you're going to infinity and negative infinity. If you're approaching any number, you cannot use this method. So if you're not going to infinity or negative infinity, do not use this method. So I'm just going to put a little question mark right there. So I'm going to rewrite our problem, lim x approaches infinity. So I'm going to get rid of the minus 3 in the numerator and the, plus four, and the minus 4 in the denominator. Because when x is really big, like a million, who cares? A million squared minus 3, I don't care about the minus 3. A million squared is the important part. So I'm going to ignore that and ignore that. So they're out. What algebra can you do to this expression? Cancel out one of the x's with the one of the x squares. So here we have a huge number divided by 2. Still a big number. So take infinity, cut it in half. It's a little hard to think about, but you still have infinity left over. You can also use our limit laws. This is 1 half limit x. x approaches infinity. That might make you feel a little better. So it's a half times infinity, which is infinity. So infinity is not a number. That's why you can't apply algebra rules to it. There's no number where a half times that number is itself, unless you're talking about the number 0. So you never get the property 1 half, like y equals y. That doesn't work out, unless y is 0. So infinity is not a number. We're not doing algebra on infinity. So it's important to keep that in mind. It's not going to behave like a number will. So infinity right there. So this is our right end behavior. So I asked about end behavior. We can start to write our right end behavior. We're going to approach infinity on the right. Let's do the same thing, except approach negative infinity now. So the 3 and the 4 don't matter. And we have negative infinity over 2, which is negative infinity. So that means on the left side, we're going to be going downwards. 
So there's our end behavior using limits. So we got right end behavior, left end behavior. I'm going to open up your 2-2 homeworks again, and you should be able to knock out a lot of the questions with this right here.